Hello, I am excited to be here with you today talking about, we're going to talk about what makes a great student. And before we dive in and get started, I'd love, unless you're driving or operating heavy machinery, I'd love for you to close your eyes for a few moments. And if you're driving, just take a breath and relax into a question. What does it mean to you to be a great student? Just take a few breaths. What are a couple of words that come up for you? Okay, good, good. So I recently asked this in my Facebook group and I got lots of different answers and some of the answers were surprising. Some of them resonated so much for me that they weren't surprising for me. But what I learned is that we all have a different idea of what makes a great student. And sometimes words and ideas and expectations that we have can create fertile ground for a judgment, okay? Create fertile ground to evaluate. And look, we're all busy. We have a lot of things competing for our time and attention. And sometimes it's necessary to simplify. And so oftentimes, these words, these ideas that we have, we can unconsciously use them to simplify down to like a litmus test, to something that's like, are you being a good student? Are you not being a good student? And if you're listening to me, you probably have an adolescent that you are parenting or at least an adolescent or maybe more than one that's in your world. And so I'm shining a spotlight today for all of us on how we use those words and ideas that we have about what makes a great student and encouraging us all to come out of reaction and out of a litmus test and out of something that's going to really put us into reaction when we don't see it with our kid when we don't see it with our kid who is curious and excited about all of their classes right i want you to do something else let's think back think back to when you were in high school when you were a teenager in school and think about whatever year comes to mind for you and the classes that you had were you super excited about every single class i know i wasn't okay and then we all have these ideas and these um these programs that we run as teenagers right i wasn't excited about all my classes but i had a program that was hey i'm like i i need to get this a I can get this A, I will work to the bone to get this A, even though I'm not excited about it. Was that a good thing? I don't know. I don't know. I know that, you know, it, it made people happy to see all A's, but was that a great thing? And, um, and, and then it got to a point where that wasn't possible. Right? It wasn't possible for me to get all the A's. And so that expectation that I had of myself when I couldn't make it. That was something that I could use as a as a teenager as an early 20 as someone in college to beat myself up and cause anxiety for myself. And so my point with that little personal story is that, you know, it, we might see things that we like or don't like, it doesn't mean 
that it's necessarily good or bad in the moment. It doesn't mean that it's even necessarily good or bad for the long term. You know, some things that serve us well at one point in our lives, as our lives change and expand and where we move into different realms, they may not serve us anymore. So I just tell that story because I think it's a, uh, it's fun to uh, see things in different ways, right? To ch challenge ourselves with that sometimes. So let me ask you, what is your energy around being a student? What's your energy? I know plenty of people who have way different energies uh, around being a student. Some people, you know, oh my goodness, lifelong learner, absolutely. And, and there's different ways that that shows up, right? Lifelong learner, I love going to the theater and putting myself in a situation and learning and questioning myself and having an internal conversation, or maybe I do it in a group, or maybe I read books, or maybe I take classes, or maybe I go out in nature and that's my jam. Okay. But whatever it is, it's something that you love. Maybe you are a carpenter and your work is your jam and you're a lifelong learner because you're always learning how to, you know, further that whole notion of master carpentry and bring different kinds of artistry to your craft. Okay, so being a a good student being a great student right so so i mean think about einstein right he was a patent clerk he did he was more things but he was a student of physics that was his jam he asked questions he pondered right he would not say he was a teacher of physics he would say he was a student of physics and now we you know we look at him and we you know his name is synonymous with genius because he was a great student of physics so where am i going with this where am i going with this sometimes we have different ideas like back to what makes a great student right what was your answer you know my i've i've thought about this you can tell right i've thought about this a lot and you know getting all a's doesn't make someone a great student. I know because that was me. That doesn't make me a great student. No way. Memorize, like regurgitate it back, get the A, forget it the next week. That doesn't, that's not a great student. And okay, that's somebody who's hell bent on getting an A. Um, one flavor of that, you know, I'm sure there are great students who, um, you know, maybe they are passionate about all their classes and get the A's. It just wasn't me. A great student has passion for what they're a student of. You know, again, thinking Einstein. A great student is willing to sit in the discomfort and move through some crap and commit to whatever their area is. I don't know if it's the theater, if it's woodworking, if it's holding space for parents of adolescents, right? This is my jam. Whatever it is for you, whatever it is for your adolescent, then it's not, I mean, you're willing to, right? Because you're passionate about it and you're willing. Those are some, those are just a, a few ingredients. Kindness could be an ingredient someone who holds space in a kind way in their in their area depends on the area maybe you're a teacher right maybe you're a teacher and that's your jam great teachers i would submit are kind right great teachers great mentors great coaches right there's a, a kindness that they bring as a student of their craft as a necessary ingredient for expanding. So 
your energy around being a student is something that definitely affects you. It's something that affects the people in your home. It affects your adolescent. It doesn't mean they adopt it. It doesn't mean they react to it. It doesn't mean one particular thing, but for sure that energy is felt and it is affecting them. So that's what I really came here today to shine a spotlight on. I would love to hear what came up for you. What was the, um, if you had an aha, if you have a little nugget to, uh, to chew on, please, please share with me. Let me know. You can, you can go to always, you can always go to the website www.relationalparents.org and there's a little connect button or uh, spot at the top and you can always just shoot me a little note um, or if you're in the Facebook group you can always post comment come on in there okay I'm sending a whole lot of love to you as a parent and as someone who has an adolescent in your world Bye for now.